Guys, welcome back. Time to just crack on and finish up this master. Uh, so we've done some EQing with frequency. I've just clipped this on the first beat and moved it right back to the beginning. I know we had some space here before, but um, I'm just wanting it on the, the first beat for now, just so that we can do some automation later. And then obviously set your project tempo to 128. Um, let's open up our inserts again. Um, we're going to go grab uh, Magneto 2 which is a tape saturation emulation. We're going to use this just to kind of uh, warm up our, our mix a little bit. Um, very brief overview of the plugin. We've got our drive over here, how much distortion you want to apply. Dual mode will stack two tape decks on top of each other, essentially. Um, our frequency range, uh, anything below this one won't be distorted. Anything above this one won't be distorted. So you just set how, from which range you want it to work at. If you hit solo, you can hear exactly what you are distorting. We'll keep the range pretty wide. Um, the high uh, HF adjust just adds a little bit of top end back in. Uh, sometimes when you're using these saturation plugins, they can kind of um, dull the sound slightly. Uh, so if you want to keep it nice and shiny, you can add a little bit of the high frequency back in again. It's usually around 12 kilohertz that most of these plugins add back in. So it's pretty subtle. Even at full, it's not that much going on, but it just kind of adds a bit of depth and a little bit of warmth to our mix. All right, let's just turn solo back off again. So yeah, like I said, very subtle, but you can definitely, on you listening on decent speakers, you'll start to hear a little bit of, a little bit of stuff going on there. Um, I can see that it's clipping just a tad, so I'm just going to bring this down as well a little bit. The output. Cool. Um, let's move on and go and drop a compressor. Um, uh, you can use a multiband compressor. Um, I'm personally not a fan of uh, multiband compression on a master unless it absolutely needs it. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip over this one. I know a lot of guys do use ozone and stuff, which has a multiband compressor, but I, I really am against the idea of using it unless it actually needs to perform a specific function. Um, so we're just going to use a standard compressor instead. Oh. Actually, not, not the tube compressor. That's an opto-style compressor. It's good for vocals and stuff, but probably not so much for... Um, oh, yeah, uh, we'll just stick with the standard compressor um, just because it's also easy to see what's going on with the track. Um, so uh, for mastering, we're not going to do anything too hectic and dial down the ratio to about 1.5. Attack, we want that to go up. I don't want it too fast, the attack. I just want to be leaving some of those peaks coming through. Otherwise, you're going to ruin the dynamics. Um, so we'll set uh, auto release, turn the makeup off. I'm going to set it to peak instead of RMS. So you can hear yeah, it's, it's very subtle what we're doing. We don't want to be doing any major um, changes to the sound right now. This is just to kind of keep things under control and uh, tighten everything up so that it's ready to be exported. So we're looking at around, yeah, negative three, negative four dB of gain reduction. I'm just going to quickly show you um, how to just do a little bit of uh, parallel compression as well. Um, we used to do them with sending to a send channel um, and then uh, adding the compressor to the send channel, much like you do with the reverbs. But these days we have uh, most of the plugins in Cubase have dry wet um, uh, controls built into it. Um, so the idea with parallel compression is that you don't want to compress too harsh, but what you can do is compress harshly. harshly and then dial the mix back so that you're adding just a little bit of the super compressed signal to uh, your overall mix. Um, so in this case, we're going to keep the ratio high. 
soft knee. We'll put that onto yeah. We'll leave that on hard knee. Or, yeah, take that off. Um, we'll leave auto release on. So we've got this really hard compression going on now, which is just accentuating our, our dynamics, just the clicks on the kick and the, the claps and such. But it's it's too hard to to bounce out like that. So what we do is we'll just start mixing the dry mix back in again, and we'll go up to about 75%, maybe 80% even. Turn off the auto makeup. So it's subtle as well, but you can hear a little bit more popping on the on the transients there. Anyways, uh, use it, don't use it. Just uh, good to know that you can do that as well. Let's move on to our limiting section. Uh, we'll open up dynamics. So we have a few different options here. We have uh, a limiter. Um, we also have our um, Maximizer. And there is a brick wall limiter as well, which is essentially like a, a clipper. Or uh, There's actually a soft clipping plugin as well, uh, which is also handy. We're not going to use this for the master now, though. Um, we'll use the maximizer, most likely, which is very much like a limiter. It's just a, a limiter with a bit of a curve on it, so it can actually um, limits different frequencies slightly differently to increase the volume. Set it to modern. And you're going to go all the way up to about minus 6 dB gain reduction. Yeah, our recovery speed at about 75% and release. Setting it to classic will just automatically set your times. Pumping a little bit too much, so we'll just dial back on the optimize there. And then finally, I'm just going to add a uh, brick uh, limiter on top of that, just to make sure that there's nothing going through. Unfortunately, this is not a true peak limiter in Cubase, so you cannot set the uh, oversampling, but um, for the most part, it does the job. So the limiter is pretty simple. Um, anything that goes over zero will be compressed at a high ratio back down to zero again. So we can, we see nothing's going through there at the moment because of the maximizer. I'm just going to dial this up. Right. That's pretty good. Um, doesn't sound like it's squashing too much. We can check our, our RMS value over here, negative 5.8, which is not too bad. That means it's pretty loud, but uh, also within reason. So one thing to remember when you're mastering as well, um, especially if you have a file that's going to be converted to MP3, is to never master at zero db uh, you always want to dial it back to about negative 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 just gives you that little bit of headroom when you do a conversion to an mp3 file that it doesn't add a uh, distortion also with uh, a limiter like this in cubase where you don't have um, uh, true peak limiting or oversampling then you might still be getting little intersample peaks 
that you won't hear, but uh, they would still be getting through. So when you convert to an MP3, that can cause problems. So yeah. I think I'm actually sounding nice and loud now. You could also, at this stage, perhaps look at... Uh, Um, let's bring that back, sorry. Let's check which one is this, that is the panel. You could also look at adding a little bit of stereo widening at this point, but um, just be very careful with adding too much of this because it can ruin a mix. Just a small amount. Of just widen it slightly. So uh, notice I've also I've set the uh, this is the pre fader and post fader um, marker. Uh, so it's not one hundred percent necessary to set this the way that I'm working currently with this bus uh, that we are mastering on. But let's say for example we were mastering on just this channel and we we're going to do some fades, uh, automation fades and stuff. Uh, you don't want those fades to be coming after your limiter. You want your limiter to be the final stage of this master. So by moving this green line around, if you click and drag it around, you can um, set it, the, this is essentially the fader. So you have your signal coming into this channel, it goes through frequency, magneto, stereo enhancer, compressors. Then it goes to the fader. Uh, any volume changes that get made gets applied there, and then it goes back to the maximizer and limiter. So just remember that um, you'll see these ones are slightly lighter, these ones are darker, that means everything before is pre-fader, everything after is post-fader. But we're going to do it a slightly different way now, we're going to go and add a little bit of volume automation on the um, on this actual channel before it gets sent to the master. I do this sometimes just to kind of uh, accentuate um, parts of the mix, uh, especially when you're compressing stuff quite hard can be quite nice to um, dial things back in the brakes just simply because it tends to bring that up very loudly when uh, you are compressing a lot. So what I like to do is now that we have our tempo set up, uh, we can drop in a point on, on, and I just enabled volume automation there. So we can, and let's just extend this, uh, drop a point in there, drop a point in there. If uh, at any time you manage to drop it like over zero or whatever. Remember that you can just look at your info line up at the top here, which you can set here. Info line should be on. You can just double click on the value um, section and just hit zero. It'll set it back to zero again. So we're just gonna make a little bit of a dip here. Actually, this one should be further over. Um, I'll show you another tool here that we haven't actually used uh, this far yet, uh, is the range selection tool. So this is this one here, or shortcut two. Um, we can just click, let's set our quantize. We select a little uh, section like that. And then you can move this entire section over to where you need to be. Like such. You will just need to clean up over here. And there we go. So in this section of the break now, it's just compressing a little bit less because there's less signal being routed to our master channel. And it also just gives you a nice uh, accentuation when it drops back into the mix again. So we can do the same here again.
to oh, back to zero. So it's pretty subtle, but it, it just adds a bit of dynamics to the mix, just that contrast between sort of quiet and loud, especially in dance music. It's always great to do that on your on your breaks. So uh, that's pretty much it for the master. Everything's sounding good. Um, one last little thing that we need to add, uh, because we're working with a 32-bit file and we are going to be rendering down to a 16-bit master, you want to go and add an UV22HR which is a dither plugin. I'm not going to get into the science behind this. Um, it's something you guys can go read up on, but it essentially just helps in the conversion from working from a higher bit rates down to a lower one um, because you're raising the noise floor, etc. Uh, this just helps to shape the, uh, the 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 audio so that you don't have um, problems going down to different bit depths or uh, different bit rates. So that's always kind of the last. Um, the last plugin in your chain before you can render your file down. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now um, we'd basically just be uh, topping and tailing this. Let's just um, place that event. Um, we're going to just select all of this, including the order. Actually, probably safer way to do this is to just. Uh, do the same thing that we did before, just go and add a little bit of silence in the beginning. Range, insert silence. And we're gonna just add a fade at the end of our stereo file as well. So we'll just bring this in a little bit and you can just drag the corners. So we have a pop, pop the fade out. Right, I think we're pretty good to go. Um, we'll just make sure this is all highlighted again. And then we're just gonna go and repeat the repeat the process as before we open up the uh, file export audio mix down. I generally go and label these as uh, 16, 16 bits MST so that we know that this is the mastered version and you want to set your bit rate down to uh, 16 bit again, 44.1 kilohertz, uh, which would be your stereo master. And that pretty much wraps up this course. Uh, so we've gone right from creating a track from scratch all the way to our mastering process and exporting our track for playing in clubs or sending to a record label or what have you. I hope you guys have enjoyed this course. Um, well, we've pretty much we've covered quite a lot of stuff. Uh, we are still just scratching the surface of uh, of what Cubase can do. There's many other functions in here that uh, that you can go and research as well. Um, some of them might not pertain to electronic music as much as others. Uh, stuff like uh, Cubase's multi-track recording options uh, for comping vocals, etc., as well as the more advanced MIDI stuff for notation and so on. Um, but do go and check out the Steinberg forums. Um, if you're a registered Cubase user, you will have access to the forums. And um, they can also be accessed from the new project dialog as well, like we saw in the beginning when we started off. Um, you'll be able to find loads of answers to loads of different questions there. Also, you know, uh, the manual is available from there as well, so you can always double check that while you are working. But hopefully you guys have learned a lot from this. And... Uh, are well on your way to producing your own tracks in Cubase. So thanks for watching and I hope to catch you again in another tutorial series sometime soon. Cheers. <laughs>